On February 19, 2025, the Canadian government announced a significant advancement in the nation's transportation infrastructure, the development of a high-speed rail network named ALTO, set to connect Toronto and Quebec City. This ambitious project, spanning approximately 1,000 kilometres, aims to revolutionise travel in the densely populated corridor that houses nearly half of Canada's population and accounts for 40% of the national GDP. The ALTO high-speed rail is designed to operate trains at speeds reaching up to 300 kilometres per hour. This would effectively have current travel times. For instance, the journey from Montreal to Toronto is projected to take just three hours, a significant reduction from the existing durations. This project is spearheaded by an international consortium named Cadence, which has been awarded a six-year contract valued at $3.9 billion for the initial design and development phase. While the announcement marks a pivotal moment in Canadian transportation history, it's essential to approach it with a measured perspective especially given the nation's track record with high-speed rail initiatives. Over the past few decades, Canada has seen numerous proposals and studies concerning high-speed rail, particularly in the Quebec City-Windsor corridor. As of 2023, 26 studies had been conducted on this project, yet none culminated in the actual implementation of such a system. For instance, in 1998, the Lynx Consortium, which included Bombardier and SNC-Lavalin, proposed a 320-kilometer high-speed train connecting Toronto to Quebec City via Kingston, Ottawa, and Montreal. Despite the technology, feasibility, and potential benefits, the project did not advance beyond the proposal stage. Similarly, in 2000, Bombardier introduced the Jet Train, a high-speed train prototype powered by a 5,000 Pratt & Whitney turbine. The Jet Train toured various cities, including Calgary, Toronto, Miami, and Orlando, showcasing its capabilities. However, despite the demonstrations, no government committed to purchasing the jet train, and the prototype remains stored at the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado. Given this history of ambitious proposals failing to materialize, it's understandable to approach the ALTO project with a degree of skepticism. The pattern of unfulfilling high-speed rail promises in Canada raises questions about the feasibility and commitment to seeing such projects through to completion. Despite past challenges, the ALTO program distinguishes itself in several key developments. Firstly, there's the government endorsement and funding. The federal government's active involvement and substantial financial commitment of $3.9 billion for the design phase indicates a serious dedication to the project's realization. Then secondly, there's the international expertise. The inclusion of experienced international partners, such as France's SNCF, which has a proven track record in high-speed rail operations, brings a wealth of expertise to the project. This collaboration enhances the project's credibility and potential for success. While the prospects are promising, several challenges must be addressed. Firstly, there's the infrastructure development. Constructing a dedicated high-speed rail line requires significant infrastructure investments, including land acquisition, track laying, and station development. Ensuring that these developments proceed on schedule and within budget is crucial. Then there's the regulatory and environmental approvals. The project must navigate a complex landscape of regulatory requirements and environmental assessments. Obtaining the necessary approvals in a timely manner is essential to prevent delays. The announcement of the Alto High Speed Rail project represents a bold step forwards in transforming Canada's transportation landscape. While historical precedents warrant a cautious outlook, the current project's robust planning, international collaboration, and alignment with national priorities offer a compelling case for optimism. As the project progresses, continued transparency, stakeholder engagement, and adherence to timelines will be key indicators of its potential to overcoming past hurdles and deliver on a promise of a modern, efficient, and sustainable transportation network for all Canadians. Do you think that the high-speed rail network between Toronto and Quebec City is actually going to be built this time? Let me know in the comments. I hope that you liked the video. If so, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed and want to be notified of new videos that are released, please click on the Art Toronto button here. This is the video that I would recommend for you to watch next, and I'm sure that you're going to love it. Here's the playlist for all of the latest in transit news and views that you're going to find very informative and interesting. And finally, here is the latest video. Thanks for watching, and happy transiting.